Hello. Welcome everyone to the second leg of today's uh, press conference, pre-match press conference, India versus Qatar, World Cup qualifiers, FIFA World Cup qualifiers round two. We have with us India head coach, uh, Mr. Yeva yeah, Skumar, and uh, goalkeeper Kipit Singh Sandhu. Welcome both of you. Uh, coach, we'll start off with you. Uh, thoughts on Qatar tomorrow? I mean, no need to talk too much about Qatar. No? We all know what they are capable of. We know their strengths. We know that they are actual Asian champions. We could witness just a few days back how, in, in what way they destroyed Afghanistan. And I would say this, this game, we can, we can say that it's a game, there is nothing to lose for us and there is hell of a lot to win. So, let's go for it. Uh, good for you, obviously, you, uh, the, the top, talking point for you, you had two brilliant performances previously against Qatar. So, how are you looking forward to tomorrow's game? I think it's obviously going to be a challenge. In the last two games we need to get over with. It's not even in my mind right now. Uh, all we are concentrating right now is uh, to arrive tomorrow in the best way possible and uh, make life difficult like we always do to our position and uh, go for the win as we always do. We'll take a show of hands on the other place. Hello. My question is for Gupri. Gupri, we have been uh, with the team for a long time. We have seen, we made a long journey with that. So how do you see this uh, next match, considering that uh, you have played Qatar uh, a few times before and you have also stopped there once? How do you see it? I think it's, it's not, not going to be any different. Obviously, they are a quality side and uh, they will have their plans as well. Uh, but now we are playing them at home and uh, we need to use this advantage and uh, give a good fight. Obviously, like Coach said, uh, there is nothing to lose and a lot of uh, things to win. And uh, that is what we want to do, uh, especially at home, to use this opportunity to go for the maximum and the hope for the best. Yeah, next question over here. Please. Hi, sure. My question is to you. Uh, after a scintillating win against Qatar in the last match, how do you think, so, sorry, against Kuwait in the last match, sorry. How do you think a match like Qatar levels things up so that the player doesn't, players doesn't get complacent, so that they remain in their zone there? Another big opponent is coming up. How do you think it's going to play? It's a game like any other. That's how they need to accept it, that's how they need to prepare for it, and that's how they need to approach it, you know, no different to any other game. I mean, in one hand it's very simple, because we, we cannot control the audience, we cannot control the crowd, we cannot control the weather. What we can control is our performance on an indi individual level as a, and as a team. And for us, there is only one thing to do. To give our best tomorrow at 7:30 even against us, you know, throughout 90 minutes. And once the final whistle is gone, then we're going to see what happened, what kind of a result we got. Next question. Uh, coach, this is Milad from Sports. Uh, I have a question about the approach of shapes uh, of India with injuries. You have tried new shapes with the KPIs in here. Do you think that makes the squad more vulnerable against an opponent like Qatar? Uh, Obviously injuries doesn't help. No? When you lose a couple of main players, key players, I would say, never mind their age or experience, it's much more difficult for you because each starting 11 player for us, when we lose him, it's a big loss because there is purpose and reason why he is the starting 11 player. He is obviously influencing others to be better on the pitch. When you lose them, then you're trying to find someone who will somehow replace that loss. And how good we are at judging who are these, you can find out only after the game. Sometimes we, we, we guess well, sometimes not. It's about the coaches, about the monitoring players on the training pitch, their behavior, not only on the pitch, off the pitch also, it's very important. How much they are committed, how much hunger they show, what their body language is showing you, what kind of attitude they have, how confident they are. Many, many important things. For you guys who are, who are 
watching from the side, you know, you, you think, okay, he's playing well for Bagan, he's playing well for Odisha, he's a good replacement. It doesn't work that way. It works only one way. What I, as a coach, see in the past few days in regards to these players available, who is the best one to replace them? And that's it. And I hope I always do the best for India. Coach, uh, one, uh, if it is a payment practice, and coach, you that didn't fit to start. Sorry, can you repeat that? That didn't fit to start uh, tomorrow? We'll see tonight, obviously, another training session. Uh, you don't need to ask about the team. It's always the same. The training pitch is the only place where players can confirm their position in the team. So there is another training session tonight in front of us. We'll see who is fit, who's not to decide upon starting it off. Uh, would, we, would you rather take another game where you make 11 saves but always the cross by you don't get out of penalty box but you still manage a point 0-0 with Charlie in the audience? Would you take another game like that should it happen tomorrow? Hopefully I have uh, less work. That is uh, that is what my aim is always. Uh, maximum points with uh, the least work possible is uh, a goalkeeper's dream and uh, I want the players in front of me to enjoy and uh, get on the score sheet, give us a win, because uh, that is much better for me than to make uh, many saves and you know, be uh, beyond that end. So for, for, for a goalie for that. Uh, and and uh, he was uh, between 2019 and now, uh, how have you seen the team progress uh, when you <coughs> played Qatar in, in Doha in September 2019, so almost four years later? How has the team progressed or has there been progress at all? Or have these kids been looking for? We progressed a lot and we all know that. It's been a process which is behind us, you know. But also there was certain advantage in 2019 prior to the game against Oman and Kuwait in Qatar which we played because we had a nearly two month camp prior to that. And we had plenty of time to prepare well to work on various aspects of the game. And that was the main reason why we came out of uh, uh, such a bad loss against Oman into the second game without Sunil without Brandon, a few more key players, to cut our soil and we got the draw. Also, it's not easy, you know, for the players at the opening stages of the, of the World Cup qualifiers when you start at home with a defeat. Uh, Undeserved, I would say, defeat, you know, because our performance against Oman was fantastic. And then you go to a different place to, again, to play against Asian champion, which was, uh, which didn't drop a point that year against anyone, which defeated Japan in the Asian Cup Final 3-1, if I remember well, you know, which defeated anyone in, in a bright way, in a, in a clear way. And you take the point. The only team in Asia who took the point that year from Qatar, we were very proud, obviously. And it was a sign that we are on a good path in regards to our work and our ideas. And now, four years later, what we can say, that process of reconstructing the team is finished, but it will never stop. That we have much bigger pool of players, contenders for the national team positions that we can uh, go with the various options inside the game, but we are still very, very uh, in love with the 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3, depending on the opponent, and that we are enjoying our game. You can clearly see that all of our players are very confident that they are with the national team, that they are very committed, and that they look different. They look different, different class. Coach, good evening. I have a question for both of you. First, I start with you. Uh, just now, Thanos has also spoke about how the team has transformed quite a lot in the last four years. I've heard other coaches also, including from Lebanon, and all saying the same thing. Have you ever felt that there is a feeling? It's that still in India, there is a doubt. <laughs> but everyone else is confirming that. <laughs> so I was coming to that. Have you felt that, uh, has there been a case that you have felt that maybe in the squad in the players, if there is anyone who is getting carried away, and if that is ever the case, how do you keep them grounded? This is not obviously technical, it's about off the pitch. No, listen, uh, 
big part, major part of our team are younger boys. And sometimes young people got carried away, but uh, the co coach job is to teach them to get back on the trophy. And there are different elements how you do that, you know. But the coach's job is not to eliminate people. I, as a coach, never did that. I never gave up on any of my players. I'm there to make them aware if some things are going wrong that they are going wrong, to tell them what needs to be changed or done to make it right, and to help them bounce back. You know, and I will use always all elements and instruments available and tools to help my players become better human beings, become better players, so they can influence others inside our environment to help the team. That's the only way this works, you know. If we have people inside our dressing room, inside our environment, who are just thinking and caring about themselves, then we are not a great team. We need everyone there committed and aware that with his presence, he needs to make others better. And that's what we do with an Indian national team. That's why we are successful in the past two years. That's why these guys are getting praise from everyone now, but they are the same people they were four years ago, five years ago, you see. It's about approach, commitment, hunger. When we have such positive leaders, our senior players like Gurpreet, Sunil, Sande, Shamrinder, here with us who are taking really good care of them individually and showing to everyone else a way of doing things in professional football, then others, all others need to follow that. Simple as that. We have great positive leaders inside the dressing room and that's very really important for the national team. I just want to I just want to ask you that you have a gift you get for the coach and most importantly before a Qatar game, especially when there have been a draw there will be more expectations, there would be nervous energy. How how are you going to deal with that? I think before I answer that, I just want to add on that I was thinking what uh, the coach is saying and uh, I think what has been happening and has happened uh, with us is credit to the coach and uh, the staff for creating such a competitive environment in the team that the scope of you dropping some levels, the consequence of that is big, that you might lose your spot and uh, that healthy competition which has been in the team with the same kind of brotherhood has helped us a lot to, you know, progress as players, as human beings and uh, make sure that we have one group to make our team, you know, better day by day and uh, day by day. And uh, to your question, I think, nervous energy really was there uh, two, three years ago when we were playing them for the first time, but I think, uh, like I said, that is in the past. What happened was in the past. No one is thinking about that. I'm not thinking about that. All we are thinking about is we played one game against two eight. Now we are at home. And this is a good opportunity for us to play at home against a good opposition and make the maximum out of it. You know, there is no uh, nothing to be scared of. No one is going to play, you know, uh, with twelve people or thirteen people, it's eleven be eleven and uh, whoever gives the best uh, gets the result. Next question. You are in a situation where you are coming from a away way, which has not happened in recent past, and against a team which is quite good. So does it uh, put you psychologically in shape ahead of the next match against the big No, as I said to our players immediately after Kuwait game in the dressing room, the best thing to go forward is to forget this Kuwait game immediately, as soon as possible. Save your energy from celebrating, being uh, self-confident, overconfident of whatever, or getting into euphoria or something like that. No, forget it. Let's get preparing for the Qatar game. That's the only way forward. So, but we need to mention, the Kuwait game was the most important game in our qualifiers in this group. A very game against direct opponent for the second score. We are very realistic. We know that Qatar is out of our league. But we also know that this is football, the most beautiful game in the world, which provides opportunities. And this is our opportunity. And as we mentioned, I will repeat again, we have nothing to lose tomorrow. We're going to go out for all of it. We can win everything and nothing to lose. Next question. Hi, coach. Uh, 
coach um, has been observing you for the last two three days over your tweets and all your uh, talks. Uh, you have been praising Bhubaneswar, uh, so welcome back to Bhubaneswar again. So uh, if the coach is so happy about it and very uh, the energy we can see on your face, will it also act as a uh, help for the players to come up with an outcome which Qatar has no, not thought of? We love this place. It's obvious how much we enjoy being here because such facilities you cannot find anywhere else in Asia. And that's what professional football needs. Good distance from fantastic hotel to the training pitches to the stadium, amazing facilities for you guys, for the people we receive here as a host. This is really important how we present ourselves to, to foreign teams which are coming here to visit us, you know. And this is really important. And I'm enjoying each second here in Orisha and every time I have a chance, I give big thanks to Orisha government for providing such wonderful facilities to its citizens, to the youth here in, in Orisha and to everyone else, to us as a national team. And I would love in regards to everything you have in regards to the sports science and all other sports to spend as much time as possible with national team here because we have absolutely everything at the perfect level here in Orisha State. Thank you once again. Next question. And the thing is that I would say that you have nothing to do. He also said that you have nothing to do but not to gain. So as you met them in four years back when there was no Sunil, now as Sunil is in your team and as a leader, so do you think that it is an added advantage to you in front of your in front of your team and other players who actually develop? In this podium, actually give you more confidence as you will stand in the in the group. I think having uh, Sunil Chetri in the team is always a bonus. So there's there's no doubt about that. And uh, obviously, like you said, in the past four years, a lot of players have developed. I've mentioned this before as well that uh, a lot of players now we've played a lot of football together, and uh, people have been maturing as well after playing good amount of football, getting good minutes in their legs and uh, I think all of this will help us uh, reach where we want to go. Obviously it takes time but uh, we need to take one step at a time. Tomorrow is a great opportunity again in front of us and uh, as a team we are going to go with the strongest uh, mindset possible and uh, aim for, you know, a big like this. Take two last questions. I think uh, my message would be to forget what had happened uh, four years ago. It's very important that we move on from that because we are a different team now, we are a better team, better sport and uh, I think to go out there with zero fear and then uh, give their absolute everything, um, not feeling like that something is saved after 90 minutes, after 90 minutes everyone should feel like, yeah I gave everything, you know, regardless of what happens with the result. If we feel after the game that we have given everything that we could have, we would be content and uh, that is uh, what I would tell you. Last question. Hello, Hello. 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 This is a question to Igor, also to be specific if you want to. Igor, after the game against uh, uh, Qatar, India had two, well, I would say bad results, but unexpected results in draws against Afghanistan and Bangladesh, especially the high against Qatar after the game against Qatar and then came back to draw against Afghanistan and Bangladesh. Both games came back came from behind. Now, would, would consistency be your put out between now and March? Irrespective of how we play against Qatar, irrespective of the result against Qatar, would you, would you think that the team is capable of being more consistent in its football so that these ups and downs, you have a draw against Asian champions and then you come back, have to come back and uh, you know, save points against uh, Bangladesh and Afghanistan, both of you were right to lose. 
I mean, consistency is clear. Performance level, good performance level is clear there, you know, because when you when you play 11 consecutive games without losing, when you face Kyrgyzstan, uh, Kuwait three times, Lebanon two, three times, Iraq, and you don't lose matches or keep clean sheets, it's quite evident that you are consistent. I will not go back and mention these tournaments in Thailand and Malaysia because I have nothing good to say about it. Not about my team and my players, but about what happened there. And it's said that my work and work of my, of my boys, our sweat, our commitment and our hunger depends on few poor people who decided on a certain day to destroy all our work which has been done for the past few years, with one good decision or bad decision. Because that changes 10 positions in the rankings. Imagine that. And I'm just on the rankings. But not many people will, will remember that when the day comes. So we are in the World Cup qualifiers. You mentioned these games. That was a big difference, because that was the beginning of our work. And to come out playing against Oman and Qatar, which was obviously two games against very strong opponents with mostly mid-press and counter-attacking football into a position when you have two block of players on the edge of the box defending for their lives and looking to counter-attack you, it's a totally different way of playing. And at that time, again, I need to mention several key players were missing who were at that time very important. Brendan Fernandez, Borges, uh, Sandesh, who got injured. At that time, after losing three, four key players, we were not ready to, to give more, to do more. Now, as you can see, with so many chances provided to young boys who appeared in last few seasons in ISL, uh, not thinking about what kind of a result at the moment that can give us risking the results for the sake of the future. We are where we are. We have options. If anyone gets injured, we have players who already have certain experience playing for the national team at the higher level. Having that feeling, what kind of a difference is face in ISL and face at the international level? And that's really precious for us because we cannot get caught anymore if anyone is injured. We have others who will jump in, who understand the process, who understand what it takes to play for the national team and the international team. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. Uh, thank you, Coach, and thank you, Gurpreet, for joining us. I request both of you to just stand up and pose for some pictures. Thank you very much.